Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We do have the square root of x cubed plus 17 equals 3x minus 5 plus the square root of x cubed plus 8. And we're supposed to solve for x. All right, at this point, if you want, go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. All right, let's get started. Now, what am I supposed to do? Well, one of the methods that we often use with radical equations is, you know, we square both sides to get rid of the radical, and then, you know, we just try keep doing it until we clear all the radicals. So we can just go ahead and do that right now. So let's go ahead and square both sides. That's going to give us, so I'm going to square this expression here. It's going to give me x cubed plus 17. And on the right-hand side, I can treat it as a sum of two things like this. And I can just square the first one. Let me write it as something squared first. And then I can square the second one, right? But I also need to write down the 2ab. Let's not forget that. So it's going to look like 2 times 3x minus 5 multiplied by the square root of x cubed plus 8. Plus, I'm going to square the second term, which is x cubed plus 8. Awesome. And then from here, obviously, you'll be getting something nicer, right? Like x cubed is going to cancel out. Okay, we can expand this, so on and so forth. But let's make sure that we leave the radical alone here. So we kind of get 6x minus 10 multiplied by the radical, right? And uh, that should equal, what, 17 minus 8 is going to be 9. And then I'll subtract 3x minus 5 from it. Okay, awesome. Great. So um, one thing you can do is you can probably try difference of two squares here, but I don't think it's going to give you anything meaningful. So typically, we will just go ahead and take this and square both sides, right? That would be typical. So I, I can just square this one and I can square this one. Okay, and that's going to give me what? Uh, 6x minus 10 squared multiplied by x cubed plus 8. And that is equal to this expression. Uh-oh. We're getting x squared times x cubed. What is that supposed to mean? x to the fifth. Wow, you're going to be getting something like 60, 36 x squared multiplied by x. Well, it's going to be 36 x to the fifth. What? Wow, this is like quintic equation. There's no way we can solve it, right? Okay, so we're not going to use this approach. Forget about it. We'll do something else. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about that now. What are we going to do? Okay, we're going to be doing something smart here. And for that, I want to bring the radicals together. So it's also another strategy that we use, which I didn't tell you at the beginning, right? So kind of kept it as a surprise that we do this sometimes too because it's meaningful. It has a meaning, right? So we'll put the radicals together. Our, our goal here is not just completely get rid of the radicals, but kind of take advantage of them. Okay, one method that um, uses this is basically uh, taking advantage of uh, conjugates, right? Remember that? Okay. So for example, if you have an expression like the square root of x squared plus 5x plus 1 minus the square root of x squared plus 5x plus 3, and it's equal to something else, so it would make sense if you multiply this guy by its conjugate because then you would get rid of the radicals quickly, right? Without squaring both sides. So in some cases, it's meaningful. But here, we do the same thing pretty much, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate, obviously, right? Okay, so take this guy and multiply it by its conjugate. And what is the conjugate of this expression? Well, it's the same thing, but use a plus sign. So easy to do, right? But you can't just multiply an expression by something, right? You have to multiply both sides, correct? Okay, or you can multiply and divide. That's another way to approach it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will multiply this expression, the original one, by the conjugate and divide by the conjugate. So it should be good. Now, one concern here might be that can this, uh, could we be dividing by zero? Uh, okay, and I can tell you that we're not because this expression here is not going to be zero. All right. You can hopefully see that it's not going to be zero. So now we're good. This is still equal to 3x minus 5 because we multiplied and divided. Now, what am I going to do next? All right. So what I'm going to do is actually simplify this. I mean, there is a reason why we multiply by conjugates, right? Why do we do that? 
because we get difference of two squares. So the top gives us x cubed plus 17 minus x cubed plus 8 from difference of two squares, as you know. And the bottom, the bottom is going to equal what? The same thing. Nothing fancy about it, right? Okay, but that's good. That's good. And remember, my remark a minute ago, I said that this, the expression, the bottom expression is not going to be zero, but we're going to improve on that one. Okay, so let's simplify this a little bit more. This is an x cubed, by the way, don't get me wrong. Uh, the top actually simplifies nicely. This is why we are multiplying by the conjugate, because we get a constant. So that's going to be 9, nice, divided by the square root of x cubed plus 17, plus the square root of x cubed plus 8. Awesome. So this is much nicer. Why? Well, a lot of times we try to rationalize denominators. Right? We don't want radicals. But here, we do want a radical in the denominator. And I'll tell you why. Okay. So look at the right-hand side and then look at the left-hand side. It's kind of like you're crossing the street, right? Look to the left, look to the right, look to the left again. Okay. So you got to be careful. If you look at the right-hand side, you see a linear equation. How beautiful is that, right? It's just linear. Straight line. No problems. Okay. No curves. If you look at the left-hand side, you'll notice some radical, which cannot be zero, right? And uh, which is probably a positive quantity, right? Most of the time. That's not a very accurate expression, by the way. But anyways, so my goal is the following. This expression here is actually an increasing function. And how can you verify that? Well, you can verify that with calculus or other methods. You can just graph it and look at it. So the reciprocal of an increasing function is going to be what? Decreasing. As x increases, I mean, you can tell, right? As x increases, the square root of x cubed plus something is going to be increasing. And that plus something similar will be, you know, increasing. And then the sum will be increasing. But when you divide 9 by that, you're going to be getting an ever decreasing um, function, right? Okay. So, what is that supposed to mean? Okay, that's pretty interesting, actually, because now you have two different sides acting differently. So, this is a decreasing function. And this is a linear function. Okay, look at the slope. The slope is positive. Ha ha. So, this is an increasing function. Why? For the very reason that if you just graph it, right, it's going to look like this. Something like this. I mean, it's going to go up straight forward, right? Okay, so how can a decreasing function be equal to an increasing function? Well, it's, this is what's supposed to mean. One goes like this, the other goes like that. You know what that's supposed to mean? That'll make a nice X maybe. Okay, they intersect at one point. Beautiful. Okay, what is that point then? Well, we could guess and check, right? Uh, how do we guess and check? Uh, well, if you just plug in some numbers magically, the answer will appear. But if you go back here to the original one, it might be easier to guess, right? Because those equations are equivalent. We didn't really multiply by zero. We didn't divide by zero. Everything looks good. Uh, so we can just check the original. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check the original. If I substitute x equals zero, I get something like square root of uh, 17 minus square root of 8. Nope, that's not going to work. First of all, notice that the right-hand side is going to be negative if x is less than 5 thirds. So I should be using something greater than 5 thirds. What's 5 thirds? Well, 5 thirds is like 1.6 repeating, right? Okay, cool. Then I should be checking uh, with something greater than that. How about 2? Beautiful. Okay, 2 is 8 plus 17 under the radical. And then here, it's going to be 8 plus 8 under the radical. And that is the square root of 25, which is 5. The square root of 8 plus 8 is 4. And the answer is 1. If I plug in 2 here, I get 1. Bam. I got it. Okay, so the answer is 2. How do I know that? Trial and error. Isn't that the best problem-solving method? Yes, it is. So, our answer is x equals 2. And guess what? That's the only, only solution to this equation because you have a decreasing function and an increasing function intersecting at exactly one point. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. Do not forget to 
comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video, which is going to be a very exciting geometry puzzle. See you tomorrow. Take care.